Drive-by movies here, it's Blaze, and I'm gonna be talking my top five films of 2018. First off, I wanna get into some of the films that I actually didn't get a chance to catch in 2018, and those are gonna be Green Book, First Man, Vice, that's actually currently not out yet, so I think that comes out Christmas Day. Uh, also, we have The Night Comes For Us. These are all films that I was kind of interested in and just haven't got a chance to check out before building my top five list. So anyways, I'm going to check those out before the end of 2019, but they're not gonna make my list for 2018. Anyways, guys, getting right into it. Number five, that's gonna be Upgrade. This is Lee Winnell's directorial film, him stepping away, stepping to the side from uh, the James Wan camp of filmmaking and creating his own retro science fiction sort of thriller about technology. It's kind of got throwbacks to Robocop and different other 80s science fiction movies but it's its own thing here in 2018, and I really enjoyed it. It's just a lot of fun. If you go see it in the theater, you're gonna have a great time, and that's definitely what happened to me when seeing this movie. It was in the theater, tons of laughs, like very thrilling moments, and uh, it just kept me to the edge of my seat. So I definitely recommend anyone checking out Upgrade if you haven't seen it yet. It's something to watch, and that's gonna be my number five film for 2018. Number four is gonna be Ali Abbasi's Border. This is a movie pass film, and believe it or not, I didn't actually see it with movie pass. I had canceled my movie pass uh, then, and 2018 was the year, the rise and fall of movie pass. Border is definitely the climax or the peak of the fall of movie pass. It's kind of one of their last pickups. I, I mean, I think they're still a company, but I don't know for how much longer. Uh, not too many people are able to use it if they do have it. But Border was one of those films that they distributed th through their movie pass distribution center, I guess you could say. And uh, it's actually an amazing film. This is from the writer of Let the Right One In. Really interesting adult fairy tale. No, it's not an adult film, but it's, it's a dark fairy tale, kind of along the lines of Pan's Labyrinth or something in that kind of same genre, but it's really, really well crafted, really interesting. Uh, you've probably seen the trailer around and you've probably wondered if you do wanna actually watch it. And I'm gonna say, go watch it. It made my number four of 2018 films. Really enjoyed this one, really dark, really moody, and a lot of twists and turns around there that you don't really see coming. It was a film that I wasn't really sure, like am I gonna go see this before the year's up? I made the plunge recently and really enjoyed it, so I recommend anyone checking that out. Number three, I'm gonna say, is Mirai. This is an interesting Japanese animated film, just recently came to the US for its run for the Academy Awards animated category. They have to kind of screen in the US, and uh, it was a Fathom event. Really enjoyed it, though. This is Mamoru Hosada's newest film. He's done plenty of other films that have gotten nominated or made their run in the US. And uh, his most recent film, I think, is The Boy and the Beast from a couple years back. It's really enjoyable. Also did Wolf Children previous to that and some other movies. But this actually has to be, I've never been really much of a fan of his work. I've always been like able to go see it, wanting to go see it, but I've never really said that any of his films were some of my favorites or something that I totally enjoyed. And this was definitely that one for me. I really love Mariah. It's a very interesting, uh, somewhat like it felt like somewhat of an existential story about this family and this little boy growing up. You're going through him growing up now, not being the spotlight of his family. He has a little sister, which of course he never asked for and is very disappointed about it. He's not the spotlight of his family anymore and he has to kind of take backseat to his little baby sister. It goes through a lot of interesting like vignettes through where he time travels, meets his sister in the future while he's still just a little boy. And uh, very interesting, like you see different parts of his family, his uh, tree of life, and it was just such a weird, interesting, like existential, kind of like experimental type film, but it wasn't at the same time because it's, it's a pretty like normal Japanese anime, and I just really, really enjoyed this one. I definitely recommend anyone checking out Mirai. I think it should be available shortly, so keep on the lookout for this one. So moving on to number two, my second favorite movie of 2018, that is gonna have to be Nicolas Cage and Panos Cosmatos, Mandy. This was such a fun movie. And was it fun? You have to ask yourself. Anyways, it was for me at least. This was like, find, finding this movie was similar to finding a movie on a shelf of VHS, just looking at that cool, awesome cover and being like, I wonder what this would look like. There, you have Mandy, that's what it looks like. It's just such a cool 
movie, a lot of flair, a lot going on, beautiful colors. Uh, some people might say, oh, this was plotless. No, it's a revenge movie. It's just a lot of revenge going on. But anyways, I really enjoyed this movie. I definitely recommend anyone checking out. It is currently available on Shudder. So go over to Shudder and check it out there. You can watch it if you have your subscription. And I can't really say much more about this. Nicolas Cage gives a tour de force, one of my favorite headlines from all posters and movie trailers, uh, performance in this movie. Just, you know, very a very heartfelt performance. A lot of people might find kind of funny because it's Nicolas Cage, but I felt like he really nailed that character, just wanting to commit revenge against this wild and crazy story. So that's going to be my top second film of 2018 definitely go check out mandy moving on to my honorable mentions i definitely have to say go check out revenge this is also available on shutter really interesting revenge movie it's not mandy but it's another revenge movie and then another movie i definitely recommend anyone checking out i feel like everyone's seen it already though is a quiet place really enjoyed this kind of snuck under the radar but did make a ton of money at the box office to spur on a sequel that we'll probably be getting in the years to come uh, definitely check out those two movies. I'm sure there's others that I'm forgetting, but those are the two on the tip of my tongue. And that's going to take us to my favorite film of 2018, and that has to be Burning. This is Chang Dong Lee's film from this year. It takes him a long time to make a movie, and I think it's been at least at least a couple years since his last movie, but The Burning is a return to form. It's just such a poetic film. It's based on a Haruki Murakami short story, and it definitely, I feel like, nails and brings that uh, story, you know, forward. That story is very open-ended, very just an interesting story. It doesn't really go into much. It's about this guy who's just uh, in a moment of, you know, intoxication admits, you know, sometimes I light barns on fire. Wait, what? What'd you just say? It's that Norman Bates moment of someone coming out and, you know, maybe telling more that they should possibly be telling there, there, there's something more to that story okay why necessarily do you light barns on fire anyways Cheng Dong Lee's burning gets into it takes you all the way not somewhere where the short story takes you a short story doesn't really go quite that far just you kind of get the idea of what's going on in this story you know possibly but the burning takes you there sorry it's not the burning it's just burning it's a burning question and it takes you there I thought this was just such a you know, kind of slow, uh, poetic movie and just something really that you don't quite get all the time. I really love the way that Cheng Dong Lee tells a story and, uh, you know, it's more of it's slightly more maybe a possibly generic story, but he does such a great job of telling it. Very interesting character study here and I uh, have to really recommend it. It's definitely an interesting story and is Steven Yeun's uh korean debut i guess you could say it's first korean movies in he's you know an american actor but he does a great job of playing this character in this movie that's very mysterious very dark you're not really sure where he's coming from and you know he takes it to the end there so i definitely recommend if you haven't checked this out go check it out i feel like we might be seeing this uh in the academy awards foreign selection maybe not but either burning or border i think will be there Knock on wood, hopefully. Anyways, guys, that's going to be it for my top five favorite films of 2018. Let me know what you think. What are your favorite films of 2018? Did we miss any? Anyways, that's going to be it for this video, guys. Check out uh, some of our upcoming series. We'll have more sequels coming back. The movie's coming back. And we have a new series on the horizon. Tune in then when that premieres early 2019.